Hi, and welcome to Community Hotline at Home. I'm Monica Weitzel. Today, we'll be talking with the East Multnomah County Soil and Water Conservation District. The Conservation District offers free workshops for rural and urban homeowners, from naturescaping to livestock management. Their classes help people care for their land in ways that benefit people, water, and wildlife. Currently, many of their events and classes have transitioned to online offerings, so the community can still get the information they need to get ready for summer. With us today is Kathy Sheeran. She's the Urban Lands Program Supervisor for this organization. Welcome, Kathy. It's great to have you here. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate the chance to talk. You're welcome. So tell me a little bit about the, the online workshops that you have. What are the kinds of things that people can learn in these workshops? We help people care for their land and water. We do that through um, a lot of our workshops, um, focus on, on these topics. So you can learn about um, nature scaping, which is, is essentially looking at nature. I mean, no one goes out into, into nature and waters or fertilizes <laughs> or mows and things like that. So, so, so looking to nature to see how our landscapes can can provide those things to to wildlife and to us like clean cleaning the air and and absorbing storm water and not needing chemical pesticides or fertilizers and things like that so um, you can learn all about that in our naturescaping workshop you can um, learn how to manage storm water with our rain garden workshops. We have edible landscape workshops. We have workshops on um, learning more about native plants and invasive plants. So some of the weeds that are spreading around your yard. And then also we have these really fun workshops on um, beneficial insects and pollinators. I think our first instinct is to run out and try to, to kill insects, but instead re recognizing how some of these insects can uh, provide food for birds and things like that right. and some of the good things that they can do. So lots of lots of things we can learn from from some of the workshops. Here. Good. Yeah. Like having some respect for some of those bugs and those bees and all <laughs> the, the pollinators. And, and yes, I know that uh, <laughs> I know that we've been talking about that at home with, you know, uh, our five-year-old granddaughter. And that's the kind of thing that people can do now while they're at home is they can learn about those kind of things and actually get out there in their gardens and their yards and, and put some of the things they learn from your workshops into practice. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So how has that transition been from doing in-person workshops now we, with COVID-19? How have you been able to transition them to online? Has has there been things that you've lost or, or things that you've gained in, in that transition? We saw an opportunity um, pretty quickly that um, we realized that, you know, we're all going to be stuck at home and we, we, we're not going to be able to go anywhere. And which meant, you know, one, people are going to be online more, but they're also going to be out in their yards more. Mm -hmm. And, and their people are definitely doing lots of projects, myself included. Mm -hmm. And so, um, we we quickly i mean i i my entire team had to learn really quickly how to learn some of this this new technology and and uh and work to share that with folks so um pretty quickly we i mean it was a it was a, a training process for all of us to to learn and um once we once we got them up online i feel like um, the response has been tremendous. In a physical room, you might just be able to have, you know, um, 20, 30, 40 people. And with an online platform, we can, we're having upwards of 200 people uh, wow. register for our workshops. And, and it's a, it's just a tremendous opportunity to, to interface with, with more people and to have more people have access to our workshops. I mean, they don't have to, I mean, for instance, someone um, in a wheelchair, you know, doesn't have to, to navigate their way in through, through a space. And so it's a really nice way to, to be able to get to our workshops and, and not have to, to expend a lot of, of energy or, or, or work through the, any of the other barriers. With that many people, you know, it's one of the downsides is just, you know, interfacing with, with people. I mean... If you think about for talking to somebody, sorry, what were you saying? No, I'd say the question answer part would be difficult, I imagine. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. I mean, and it's hard. I mean, just like what happened just now, we're, we're seeing this actually a bit just because it's, 
um, the physical cues that that you that you take from from someone are, are just harder when you're online and and when there's uh, when there's people that have interesting questions to ask and things like that I mean a lot of times in a physical workshop you get to you know talk back and forth and and stuff like that whereas so it's it's missing a little bit of that and we're trying to incorporate that back in but um, but all in all, I think that it's been um, a pretty a pretty good opportunity for, for both us and the community. Well, it's nice to find a silver lining somewhere in this whole situation. Right? So, <laughs> so that's good news. <laughs> so how can people, after they've taken the workshops, is there a way for them to continue to engage with the Soil and Water Conservation District? Definitely. We, we have a yard tour every year. And instead mm -hmm. of doing that in person where you're visiting gardens, you can get online and share your yard. You can show, you can ask questions. You can, you can show, um, you can show us weeds that you're tackling. You can show mm -hmm. us native plants and things like that. So we have a Facebook page and a Facebook group that is our, um, our virtual yard tour. And, I like that. I like that. Um, Can people ask you questions like, like, what do I do about this particular weed, or is this a weed, or? Yes, exactly. Kind of it's it's just a fun way to 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 interact with us. I mean, we do have a website www emswcd. So that's East Multnomah Soil Water Conservation District. Got the long one, yeah. It is. <laughs> don't, don't mix up the number, the letters. Right. Um, I've noticed you also have a, there was, I found a kind of a color book, workbook kind of thing for kids oh, yeah. as well that, that you can download and print and, and have for your kids to work on things. Yeah, so we have a really talented staff person who is, um, he, he actually has a, a, a botanical um, drawing degree in addition to, to his um, wildlife background. And he does a lot of our, he does drawings and, and graphics for us. And just recently he and um, another coworker, Chelsea, created this this workbook for kids mm -hmm. that is a coloring book and and mazes and things like that so um if kids are, are sitting around you're wondering what to give them to do I, it's a it's a fun way to to engage the kids in a in a fun story yeah i printed mine off so i'm taking it home so <laughs> <laughs> looking forward to passing it on to my granddaughter so that's that's a great thing um right. so is there anything else that we should know about about the work that you're doing now um, that you would like your you know supporters to know about yeah, so we we do a lot of, of different things. I mean, we work in the rural areas and the urban areas, but um, one one really exciting thing that we do is um, we offer grants to the community, um, so the community can can either an organization can apply for a large grant. So we have an annual grant that um, is anywhere from five thousand to a hundred thousand. Um, every December, you can you can apply for a, a grant to do conservation projects or conservation education. Um, but also monthly, on a, on a monthly basis, we have a, a small rolling grant called Space Grants, and they're they're small projects and community events. And so these these grants are up to two thousand um, dollars, and they're 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 essentially to to help the community put on events, to do small projects, things like um, does, does a school group need transportation to a natural area to learn mm. about that natural area or putting on event that is, is conservation um, focused or like a little research project or a pollinator garden. So lots of different opportunities for this grant. So now with the changes and, and we're not sure how long this virus is going to stick around, there may be some online opportunities. People are maybe doing their research or they're doing a project that's more online focused and you look at that sure. as well. Sure. Yeah, great, that's wonderful. That's, so we can find that information all on your website then, is that right? Yeah, so if, if you, um, along the top of our website, there's the different program, our different programs, and, and you'll find grants and cost share. You'll find those grants under that. Good, good. Doing a lot of good work, Kathy. I really am happy to hear about it. And I think <clears throat> there's a lot of people who don't know about the, about the East Multnomah County uh, Soil and Water Conservation District. So hopefully they'll check it out and um, check some out, some of those classes. I'm, I'm 
thinking I'm going to look at some myself. So thank <laughs> you so fun. much. Yeah, it, it sounds like it. It sounds like it. So thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. And to our viewers out there, um, please check them out on their website. For all of us at Metro East, to all of you, stay safe and stay healthy.